Hi everyone, this is Peter here. I hope you're all having an amazing day. In today's video, I'm gonna show you about 50 images that I took over the course of a few weeks with my Canon EF 100mm macro lens and the Nisi 58mm close-up lens and the Raynox DCR 250 snap-on lens stacked for a maximum magnification of about three to one. You might think that stacking these lenses might result in significantly lower image quality than for example on a special ultra macro lens, but I can assure you that it's not the case. If you already own an optically excellent lens that is capable of one-to-one -one magnification, then I can highly recommend this setup as an upgrade. Anyway, let's have a look at those pictures now. I can't wait to show you some really cool subjects that I'm particularly happy with. Let's start with one of my favorite subjects, jumping spiders. This first species is a garden jumping spider that I spotted on our Swiss cheese plant. Now that the weather has become milder, their prevalence on leafy vegetation is more apparent. This species is very inquisitive and relatively easy to photograph, unlike some other jumping spiders that can be quite skittish as you approach them. In this shot, you can see that it was ingesting a partially liquefied victim, most likely a tiny fly. This next specimen was slightly larger and had different coloration with more orange hues and beautiful metallic silver chalicery. These are all individual shots and even though stacking would have been beneficial, the most important parts of our subject are in perfect focus and the sharpness is excellent. In this last close-up, you can see this little fella with a freshly captured prey that never stood a chance. I also wanted to show you this following image in which you can see the abdomen in a vertical position which I had only seen with peacock spiders before as part of their courtship display, so I was quite surprised. You can even make out the sixth spinneret at the end of his abdomen. This next portrait is of another garden jumping spider with very vibrant colors. I found this specimen at the local nature reserve, just like this one, which was hiding in a little silken shelter called a pup tent, which they use for sleeping and also to protect themselves from bad weather. The next three shots are of a white banded house jumping spider, which belongs to the genus Maratus, commonly known as peacock spiders. We have quite a few in our backyard, they really like to hunt on the brick walls there. This one was a very cute, quite shy female that kept playing hide and seek with me and it took me quite some time to grab these images. The next shot is of a common peacock spider, the very first specimen I've spotted so far this season. I was really stoked that I managed to capture this tiny male as he was about to leap off from this leaf. I spent about two weeks recording this species last year and if you are interested, feel free to check out the series I dedicated to them. I will leave a link to this playlist in the description. Let's continue with some more spiders. These first two images are of typical orb weavers. I think this first one is the male that was quite close to this large female that was resting on a thorny branch as well. I might be wrong, so if you recognize any of these, please leave a comment down below. The next few shots are of cribellate spiders. These social house spiders are non-venomous. They kill their prey by wrapping them in silk and crushing them in the process. I've got multiple videos on this fascinating species, so feel free to check them out in action if you're interested. I'm especially happy with this stack shot, for which I had to blend four individual images for greater depth of field. The coloration of this specimen is absolutely stunning. This next subject is an eastern bush orb beaver with green patterns on its abdomen, which was the first for me, as I had only seen differently colored specimen before. The next two images are of another orb weaver species that belong to the same genus called plebs. The high magnification close-up shot is a four image stack where you can see all the tiny hairs covering almost its entire body. Our next subject is a round shouldered orb weaver that was actually resting on a leaf on the same sapling. Once again, the patterns on the abdomen and the really intricate concentric web structure really caught my eye in these close-ups. Lastly, I'd like to show you a few shots of lynx spiders. This high angle portrait is of a farmland lynx spider. I barely managed to notice this one because of how well camouflaged it was amongst the vegetation. 
this smaller specimen was a grass lynx spider that was resting on a blade of grass, waiting to pounce on an unsuspecting victim. They are exceptional leapers and quite acrobatic, which they put to good use when hunting. The last three images are very special to me, as I had never captured a lynx spider before during molting. I actually thought initially that it was dead, as it was just swinging from side to side in the light breeze. In these subsequent shots you can see, as it was crawling out of the old exoskeleton, you can even spot the new shiny little fangs in this third image. Our next subject are rainbow ants. In this first picture there is a winged female called an alate, which I captured in our backyard. After some heavy rain I noticed these swarming on our fence. These alates are the reproductives that sometimes turn into queens and are capable of establishing new colonies. The next two shots are of the same species carrying an injured or sick individual, which they tend to remove to ensure the overall health of the colony. In this next image I captured some really tiny larvae of leaf beetles, not entirely sure of the species, they looked quite interesting with those tiny black dots. The next two shots are of a grass moth I stumbled upon in our backyard, it was resting on the fence as well, both of these images are stagged. The first one was created from five and the second one from seven individual shots. The patterns and the coloration of the scales and CT were quite similar to that of the wooden fence. The next couple of shots are of an earwig that I found indoors. I placed it into a plastic container, grabbed a few high key portraits, then took it outside for this last image where it was momentarily resting on a decaying leaf. This next species is a wood net. Once again, this is a stacked image consisting of 12 layers. I really like those large compound eyes and the ocelli, the three simple eyes in between. The next four shots are of soldier flies. I captured the first two at the local nature reserve, while the specimen in the last two was in our backyard. It's so cool to see how much more iridescent those wings look when I decided to selectively remove the highlights in post. The last few shots are of common half bands, I believe. They are very useful pollinators and are relatively easy to capture even mid-flight when they decide to hover in one place. The second one was resting on a leaf while cleaning itself. This next image shows the sugary secretion called honeydew that some plant hoppers produce and certain ant species feed on. This was the very first time I managed to capture such, so I was really happy. This next photo is of the caterpillar of a clouded footman moth. Those urticating hairs look quite intimidating and you should stay away from touching those as they can irritate the skin quite a bit. The next four shots are of a muscoid fly which belongs to the genus Helena. I took this lower magnification sequence while it was preening itself which lasted for a good half a minute. Our second last subject is a common drone fly that I spotted on a Swiss cheese plant again. First I captured it from above which helped with the identification. As I tried to get a side portrait it suddenly took off but luckily it landed on a nearby leaf again and then I finally managed to create a stack of seven images which shows quite a bit of detail of this beautiful specimen which is an excellent honeybee mimic. I left a tiny caterpillar of a moth last as I really love the low key simple framing of these images as this small lava was hanging onto a slim thread of silk while swinging from a branch. It was really difficult to nail the focus on it because of how windy it was that day and it took me several attempts to capture these close ups while it was wiggling its way up towards a solid surface. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed and you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I've got heaps of macro content for you. Also, you might want to check out these educational macro videos next. Thanks again and see you all very soon in the next one.